Hi everybody and welcome to the Becoming Podcast. Another special guest with us today, Glenis German. German? Germain. German, German is enough. Okay, oh, let, me, <laughs> let me start again. Let me start again. Don't worry, I get called everything. Yeah. <laughs> I love, I'll answer to anything, oh, yeah. literally. Oh. Okay, I've been called um, Whiskey, Ines. The best was Grimace. Oh. Oh my gosh, I loved that. Okay. So, yeah, call yeah, me yeah. anything. So, Germain, Ger- but it is German. German, German, <laughs> okay. So, yes, welcome to the Becoming Podcast. Uh, a very special guest with us today, Glenn is German, and sharing about uh, the impact that she has on our community uh, around here in Mallorca and further afield and uh, I've known Glynis now for a while and she's helped me with uh, a number of different areas in my training so uh, Glynis welcome hey thank lovely you, to Jane. have you here it's great to be here yeah it's a it's a nice little setting and of course being with you is a nice energy uh, thank yeah. you I only hang out with people I like that's good that's good <laughs> so if I haven't seen you for a while that's yeah. because I don't like you yeah. now I like people <laughs> oh, summer time and you're flat out busy with all the yeah, things that you're doing. So I know. tell us, what what do you do? Oh my gosh, where shall I start? How long have we got? I so, know. I'm a celebrant. I would say that I do celebrancy. And what is that? So um, it's the ceremony, basically. So what I do is ceremony. I am totally fulfilled doing ceremony. I can do weddings, renewal of vows, baby blessings, um, entering into parenthood, motherhood, fatherhood, whatever. And, uh, of course, celebration of life funerals. So I've been known to do um, ceremonies for the opening of a music festival. I've done ceremonies for fourth year of the Spanish high school system who were either leaving the fourth year and transitioning into the the baccalaureate, Mm -hmm. or they were leaving altogether, or they were going on to do some kind of, um, what do we used to call it in in the UK? Apprenticeship. Oh, right. yeah. I've done any number of ceremonies. That's one part of my work. Mm. My other work is is death education, death awareness. So I work as an end of life doula. I'm a funeral planner. Um, I've got a death festival. I facilitate death cafes. I'm a bit of a weirdo. So that's me in short. And I'm mother to two beautiful young men. Yeah, yeah. that's my f- fulfilment. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean that. That part of it there, working with death, uh, is something that I'm, I, uh, I resonate with as well, yeah. uh, very much. And bringing people's awareness and changing their mentality. And we were at a, a death cafe that you were holding yeah. yesterday, which was yeah. wonderful, it really was, They're great fun, aren't, aren't they? they? Aren't people, they? I feel sorry for people that they don't realise that actually um, when you leave a death cafe, you feel better than when you got there. So, so for people like us, we're just... I like to say curious, but we're really nosy yeah. because, I mean, you do a lot of work anyway with the whole idea of the ancestral um, legacy. And um, so nothing surprising really. For Well, there's still lots of surprises, but coming out of the death cafe after tea and cake yeah. <laughs> and having a good old listen because we can either um, hear people in, in their most vulnerable of moments or their most curious of moments, but just gathering together, oh, man, yeah. everybody should go to a death cafe. Yeah, you know, yeah. they yeah. are great fun. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think so. The, the 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 knowledge and the the stories and the feelings and the emotions there, but it's not all sadness though, no, is it? No, no, no. There's a lot no. of other emotions going yeah. on. And I think, and 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 this is what one of my um, sort of goals to to try not to force people to understand because I'm a forceful character and I do (laughs) recognise that. But I'm trying to invite people to understand. Um, Feelings are there and I'm seeing a lot of this whole idea of suppressing the feelings Mm. um, when it comes to death of a loved one. And actually, I I, I always wanted to be Indigenous in natural fact. Our Indigenous um, ancestors were the Taino people who are no longer here. Um, because just to respond in that way of feeling is so much healthier than just tapping it down. So we've got a fashion for direct cremations, Mm -hmm. which is to send the body to be, not so much here in Spain, but definitely in the UK. So I've got a lot of colleagues in the UK 
um, who are facing this. So direct mm -hmm. cremation is send the body to be cremated, nobody's in attendance, and that will hopefully help the pain go away. Uh, no, it will be there somewhere else in your life. Yeah. So um, feeling is great. And, and I always say vulnerability is like a superpower mm. when we can contact and connect to our vulnerability. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What strength. Yeah. You've seen it in yes. your work. Yes. I'm yeah. seeing it in my work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think it's a, it's a thing at the moment where they, well, people generally, it's a, it's a quick fix situation. Yeah. They want to get it out of the way and get back on with their lives as if it didn't really happen yeah. for a number of people. Yeah. Um, and how sad. Because, I mean, life is storytelling. Yes. You know, and yeah. you come from a tradition, a, an island where storytelling is, is, is crucial to, yeah. to understanding and to moving forward. Yes. And um, there's so much to learn if we were just to connect. But this Western obsession of, of tapping it down. Yeah. Yeah. And then we see the mess in unresolved grief, in, in you know, mental health issues, which are every time more and more. And, and I do think there is a lot of unresolved grief that is affecting us or even... Um, the constellation, the family constellation of being handed on to the next generation because it hasn't been cleared in, in that generation. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it is, um, the problem is getting bigger. It's, it is being blown, people are allowing it to blow it out of proportion really out in a way that's there. And if you don't, if you're suppressing those feelings, those emotions, what I'm finding when I'm working with, with people, with clients and that as well, is that something will come out, could be a movie on TV, yeah. or it could be, a, I mean, a, a pet is a big one as part of the family when a yeah. pet passes as well. And then all of these emotions, all these feelings come out and they're thinking, well, you know, and it may not even be their pet. Exactly. But this exactly. has been what's yeah. building and building yeah. and building. Yeah. Really. I see that in the funerals because... I would have been working with, previous to the moment of the funeral ceremony, with the family, with the with the close direct family, um, and then I'll be there holding ceremony, holding space for the funeral, and there'll be other people who would have come as mourners. And often they're not closely related, but I see the power, mm -hmm. he the healing powers of ceremony mm -hmm. is if I see them showing emotion, feeling emotion, going through emotion, I'm like thinking, phew, thank, thank you. Yes, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. it's being moved. Because the only two guarantees in life, one is death, mm -hmm. we're all going to die, get used to it. Yeah. The other is change. Yes. So feelings do change. Yeah. And um, I know that when my mother passed in 2022, that year was a challenging year for me, but it was a year of growth into acceptance, into more self-love, mm -hmm. into understanding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But still, I had to go through it. And it's not nice. The uncomfortable bits yes, are yes. uncomfortable. Yeah. But it's like birthing. I've been blessed to birth two boys, and I had natural births for them. And I'm not going to lie. It hurts. Yeah. Of course it hurts. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But there's an end in, in sight. Because it doesn't hurt forever. No. It hurt in the time it needed to hurt. Sure. Because there was something happening. Yes. Something growing. Yes. Something being born. Yes. And yes. Then, yes. Guess what? Yes. The hurt was over. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, know, yeah, yeah. The joy and the happiness was, and the the love and all of those hormones doing their business. Yeah, it was yeah, all yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Um, and also, I mean, <clears throat> going to back to the birth with the indigenous cultures of the of the world and our grandparents, our great 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 grandparents. Yeah. The birthing process was much different than it is oh, now. Yes, it was definitely. certainly more natural. You know, they were in a different position. They weren't having to lie down, so no. it was comfortable for the doctors yeah. doing it. And they had different techniques of, of and, the birth process. And they were supported. Yes, totally. Often. Mm -hmm. so, so, and traditionally, yes, it, it would have been the, the gender role. Mm -hmm. And um, and it was it was women's work. And aren't we the lucky ones? Yes, yes. You know, yeah. we get to do that kind of work. We get to do the work of welcoming and we get to do the work of saying goodbye, yeah. traditionally. Yes. Um, 
you know, it is not exclusive to us, but it has been something that we've been used to doing. And and how beautiful when you're supported. Yes. yes. How beautiful when that, that's what I missed in my mum's two month dying process because she fell of an age where the body is frailer. Uh, the body is older, mm-hmm. and so it was a matter of time, and it took two months, and we kept her at home. Um, but I wished I'd been supported by my own doula and my yes. own celebrant. Yes. Sadly, with the whole family constellation, that's who I was. I was yes. the celebrant. I was the doula. Uh, but I see the benefits when 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 we have a, a good network of yes. people around us who are positive, who are our champion. They're championing mm-hmm. us. They're our coaches. There are personal trainers, there are everything, there are wise bank managers, those people that we need to have around us called community, Um, because often it might not be the family that's bringing that to us, but the family's there, and maybe it is that we have to work things out with our family. Don't let ghost, what are those expressions nowadays, ghosting? Yes, yes. What's the other one? Yeah, no. Um, You know, all of those new modern things of just basically dropping people. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Cancelling. That's it. Yeah, that's another one. (laughs) Not entirely sure what they are, but they sound pretty cool. Yeah, no. You know, of not to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Also, looking at the death um, situations and talking about there, I know in New Zealand and a lot of indigenous uh, cultures around the world it's over a number of days or yeah. a week or if not longer. and then the the passage of time yes. also requires certain things to be done yes so it could be a year later yes yeah, yeah. 24 hours 48 hours 36 hours i mean it's yeah. like yeah whew, yes you know yeah. and it doesn't have to be like that and i think people living here in mallorca who are listening to this podcast should know that it doesn't have to be like that it just you just need to be aware that costs are involved that's all but the the law is not saying it has to be done within three days let's understand where we are Mm -hmm. and the traditions and the customs of where we are and those are the traditions and customs because we're living in a in a society here in Mallorca that is still pretty much close to each other so it makes sense that the next day is the mass or the viewing of the body and the day after that is the burial or the day after that is, you know, yes. it, it happens very quickly. But it doesn't need to be like that. Mm. It doesn't need to be like that, especially because there is, uh, people don't seem to know what they can do if they're not going to sign up for what has always been done. Right. So if you've been brought up in a, in a religious context and religion is your... Um, is your your balm, your balm mm-hmm. then that's great. Then you know what you have and you know what is done because that's the way it's done there. Yeah. But if you don't want that, then please find out yeah. what you do want. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Please work towards that end because um, there is there are solutions, there are alternatives, and celebrancy is. I'm proud to be a celebrant mm. because I, the fact that it's personal, the fact that we spend time with the deceased family in the context of funerals, or we spend time with the couple in the context of weddings or renewal of vows, or parents. Mm. Um, it's all about time, and it's all about telling their story. Mm. So there is an alternative. Don't just leave it as a surprise, yeah, yeah. which is my great frustration of, which is why I've taken the Death Cafe and where I'm taking it to still, mm. and which is why I'm in the fifth year of a national death festival, <laughs> because we've got to get used to, to becoming comfortable. For me, um, when people say, why should I, you know, I'm like saying, okay, Imagine the poor parents Mm -hmm. who either it's a newborn that hasn't made it or it's a child that's died tragically. We're closing, we're cancelling them and Mm -hmm. we're ghosting them because we don't know what to say. So everybody thinks it's better not to say anything. Those people need us to be able to cry with Mm -hmm. and to not listen to some phrases that we've heard that we think that's the thing that you should say. No, 
It's for us to be comfortable with their distress, with their sadness, and just give them the space. Yes. That's the greatest service we can do by getting comfortable about death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, the conversation, as you said, it is, it's the sharing. It's people opening up about their own fears and feelings, as we talked about yesterday. Yeah. This is in our DNA. We have been programmed like yeah. this for a number of generations now, and we need to get over that. Yeah. You know, yeah. death is inevitable. We are going to die. We're yeah. not going to live forever, yeah. although some people think that they are, yeah. but they're not. And this the, body is definitely <laughs> hoping for the next new model. I want the hybrid. <laughs> no, I don't want a hybrid. <laughs> I want, the, you know, the fantastic Ferrari sure. to go into. Sure. But the, the body has, has only... I haven't even studied biology or any science, but I get the picture. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. last forever. No. No, so no. so get over it and, yes. and explore, ask questions. Meet with um, with gurus or religious leaders, mm-hmm. you know, or with psychotherapists or, or yes. psychos if that's your thing. But, yes, yeah. you know, talk about it yes. with people, ask questions. And the best teacher, nature. Yes. Go out into nature and see how she's not upset when something dies because no. it will come back in yeah. another form yes. Yes. or next season. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. yeah, yeah, and people need to, to understand that and be aware of that and, and take that on board that um, it's not finite, it's not what's been preached yeah. to us. But as you said, if that's their cup of tea, that, yeah. that's okay. And I, I want to believe like, in that. You know, yeah. they're the easiest clients, right? Okay, <laughs> why is that? Because they've got faith, sure. And and um, and and I, I love them because I mean, I have my own faith, but I'm not going to bore people talking about my beliefs and what I think mm. unless somebody wants to know about it um, and call whatever name it is but I know that Glynis is just one little teeny bit yep. of this huge massive picture if I'm looking at that painting that's on your wall over there there's so much mm-hmm. and it might look like oh it's a wave there's a lot yes. in that yes. wave yeah. and it's yeah. the same in life so the, the clients that, especially end-of-life clients, the ones that have had um, comfort from whatever they've practised or, or explored, mm. they're the easy ones. Yes. They really are. It's the ones that don't have anything, mm-hmm. that are confused, yes. that are not understanding, that are going through a lot of emotions that they can't put into context. And, and that saddens me because, mm. um, you know, life is a lot to take on. Yes. But at the same time, take the time yes. and yeah. get to know life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Enjoy it. Yeah, that's what we we're can. here for. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. <laughs> so, I mean, talking about this, but how did it start? How did you get into to, death? Into, <laughs> into death. But not only death, it's about ceremonies. And, and I love the ceremony side yeah, of things. Yeah. I, I love ceremonies, yeah. whether it's a full moon ceremony or another ceremony. And this is why working with yeah. you and the celebrant in my training. And you're well. going to be a great celebrant. Hey, I've hey, been, hey. I've realised because, so how did I get into it? I was blessed at this life. I must have done really good karma because uh, this <laughs> life has been a big blessing. Uh, because I was born to the parents um, I was born to, you know, I, I mm. picked awesome parents. They are, um, they are amazing, yeah. and they live on. Even though they both left their physical bodies, um, dad twelve years ago, mum two years ago, mm. yeah, two years ago. So, uh, and they were both very different because mum was Jamaican and dad was Welsh. Dad was a proud Welshman. Mm-hmm. And um, mum was always searching for God in religion because that's the Jamaican experience. And luckily yeah. she found God elsewhere. <laughs> so I'm eternally grateful for that. But what I loved about my parents was that no subject was off limits. No subject was taboo. And that included death. Right. So there was very much a, um, a non-dramatic approach to death. Yeah. Because there was that acceptance of... It was inevitable and we were all going to die. So I remember when my grandmother died, there was um, you know, th- th- there was more happiness than there was sadness. Right. Because, And I think it was because they had a very profound understanding about the continuum mm-hmm. of life. Yes. 
of the fact that this body is what dies, mm-hmm. but what drives this body mm-hmm. is eternal. Yes. So I've been blessed to have that background. Right. And um, so when Celebrancy found me, which was just the best story, um, I had the most wonderful job. And if, by the way, if anybody wants self-storage, go to Planet Space, because that was my <laughs> last wonderful job. And I had made a decision to myself that as an employee, I was going to finish being an employee, but at the the most wonderful job. Yep. So Planet Space ticked all the boxes of being the most wonderful job I've ever had. And I've had a lot of jobs and I've enjoyed every one of them until it came to the part where it was time to move on. Right. I think that's because my Welsh dad, who was an educator, would come home and say, well, that's another job gone, because <laughs> he would lose his job quite frequently because he was a pain-in-the-bottom Welshman <laughs> with an opinion. Great man. So, um, so, I, was, so I, would, I would meet a lot of people in my proper job, mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> which was selling storage and boxes. Um, but somehow, somebody that met me there knowing that I had that job, recommended me as a celebrant, which to this day is the most curious thing that was meant to be. Because she recommended me to a mother who's the godmother of her son had died, but the church didn't have a ceremony to replace said godmother. But the mother wanted a godmother for her son so he could continue with having that figure in his life. So this woman that I would meet networking, Joanna Walton, my hero, Flowers, she's a florist in the wedding industry, and she recommended me to do do this ceremony, which I came up with in five minutes with another friend whilst we were on the beach. But I said yes, Yes. as it's my habit to say yes (laughs) to everything. I'm learning to say no occasionally. And I did my first ceremony, and... I remember waiting, and it was only going to be 12 of them. So there was the boy, the new godmother, the parents, the grandparents, and then siblings and and some other relevant people. So I was waiting for them, and the chairs were arranged six and six, and I'd made the booklets of the ceremony. And I I always like to bless people with, with qualities, you know, what is somebody like? Are they happy? Are they patient? Are they tolerant? Are they generous? Are they loving? Are they caring? Are they peaceful? So I'd written qualities, different, 12 different qualities on the back of these little booklets that I'd prepared. And I, in my head whilst I was waiting, I was thinking, so who am I going to have there? So I started to seat who I knew were coming. So I was going to have the boy, the godmother, the parents the siblings, the grand, you know, I had it all in my head and I changed it a few times and I went, no, no, no. So when they all arrived, I told them where they were all sitting and they picked up the booklet and I said, oh, by the way, turn around the book. There's a gift on the back and that's a quality that you're blessed with for today. And they all related to the quality they yeah, had. Yeah, and it yeah, was absolutely yeah. beautiful. But after the ceremony, I was like, I was born to do this. Everything of leading up, and this is my mm-hmm. mid-40s that I'm, you yeah. know, 2011, hang on, I'm lying. <laughs> well, okay, so I was, you know. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually close <laughs> enough to 50. <laughs> I was, you know, um, I can't remember what I was going to say, but it was just like everything mm. that I did. I did my degree in drama and then changed it to do drama in Spanish. I loved reading um, in assemblies at school when I was growing up. I loved drama. I loved music. It all made yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. There's me looking all of my life and celebrancy said, right, you're ready. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And that's what I do. And I love ceremony because I see where we can take people with it. Yeah. It brings so much joy and it can bring so much healing. Yes. Sorry, I talk yeah. a lot. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's wonderful. It's a wonderful way to get into it. Is this, yeah. you, know, you didn't really have time to think or to worry about what yeah. was going on. No. You were just really throwing in. Yeah, and, and it, it came, came, and, that, it came naturally. Yeah, and every year, at the end of every wedding season, I always make the, um, the promise to myself to, to be better next year. Um, because I look back on this season, I think, okay, where's room for improvement? So I'm constantly making sure that, but 
I don't change, I just grow. Right. So I'm softer and wiser and more light. I hope that when I die, I'll be filled with just peace and love, you know. So it's a work in progress. That's yes. where I'm going to. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I know I'm going to eventually. <laughs> I mean, but did you have to make a lot of changes in your life to go about no, this? Change, well, I tell you, when you don't make change, change makes it for you. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So so there'd been a, a, you know, a dissolving of a marriage of... But never parenting. We're very, very good parents to our beautiful sons. So, mm. but we just don't have a marriage together. Yeah. Thank God, I don't think I could live with him. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Rob. <laughs> so, um, so those changes had been made for me mm. because it was knocking on Glynis's door, saying, "Glynis, when are you going to do this? When are you going to do this?" And Glynis, yeah. "Oh no, I'm too this. I'm too that. I'm too scared. I'm too afraid." And then life goes. Boom, forget about all that nonsense. Now, what are you going to do? And you're like, oh, now I've got to do it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. everything will find you. Yes. You yes, know, yes. so it's it's nice to go around. Ignorance is blissed and blind is better. Yeah. Um, but well, somebody will come knocking on your door. So let's hope it's, you know, I'm grateful that it hasn't been an illness that came knocking on my door, which is why I'm taking care of my health right now, so that illness doesn't come knocking on my door. Yes. And um, and I think it was the, I mean, I've had great things that I've done in my life. I've worked for a foundation on sustainability. I've worked in the film industry. I've milked cows on a kibbutz in Israel. I've taught very bad English here in Spain and in Brazil. You know, I mean, I've done a lot of things yeah. and I've always done them. And when I've stopped enjoying them because of circumstances such as one job where a new boss was brought in and, mm. he, you know, my values weren't aligning. And it was like, you know what? I, just enjoy your job. Yes. I'm off for yeah. the next adventure. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so now I'm on this adventure. I'm training to deliver um, doula training okay. with a British organisation because I'd love to bring end-of-life doulas to mm -hmm. Spain. Mm -hmm. So so that's what I'm doing. That's the next stage. Mm -hmm. what, what is a doula? Can you explain? So, so there's birth doulas and death doulas. Okay. And it's, it's nothing new. Nobody's invented the wheel. Yeah. The wheel was invented a long time ago. And it's just the support uh, for the birthing mother and whoever's surrounding the birthing mother. And the same for the dying person and whoever's surrounding the dying person. So yeah. in the case of dying, we might be called by the family who need support, or it might be a very proactive and brave um, person who's at end of life that calls us. Right. And we're just there. We're non non medicalized. It's not a medical um, role, mm -hmm. which I think is great. It's a supportive role. It's a listening role. It's an observing role. It's a holding space role. It's it's everything, mm. and and it's very simple. And I personally, before I die, I would love to see that doulas were part of the system right. that is currently on offer because the mm. system that's mm. currently on offer, nobody's got time to sit and talk to you yeah. or sit beside you no. or just hold your hand. Yeah. And that's the, the biggest crying shame. Yes. Yeah. So so that's what um, the doula's there to support, mm. to do what's ever needed. I remember I had doulas, I had birth doulas at my, at the first birth, the second birth came a little bit too quickly. And, um, you know, it, are we going to be washing the dishes because, oh, this baby's coming and there's all these dishes to be washed? Or does the mother want us to sit with her? Or she sent us away and the dad's freaking out and we're going to sit with him? You know, or do we have to entertain the children with mm. dog need taking out? Um, it's it's whatever is needed yeah. because we've been observing and we've stepped in to, to cover that need because we observe that, oh, I think I'll be well suited to stay here with this one right now. Right. It's It's especially dying... Death doula, it's definitely for me now mm. to be present to me to see where I can serve. Right. That's basically we're there to serve. 
Sure, yeah. sure. So if people come into a situation, they contact you. What is what is there are different stages that you go through with them, or it just depends on their knowledge and their situation of what has actually happened, and you adjust. You adjust it because you know you have a um, a wonderfully good name, which is which doesn't say enough for what the work that you do uh, here. But when somebody gets in contact with you, what would they expect? So. It depends when, because there's a lot. So this is one of my missions is that we start talking about dying and death now Mm -hmm. whilst we're healthy and there's nothing wrong with us. Yes. Because the more we're going to do that, the more we're going to be able to start thinking about how do we want to live to include how do we want to die. Yes. I'm not much of a weirdo by thinking about my dying. Mm -hmm. No. (laughs) I think it's quite healthy that um and i'm not going to oblige my sons but i imagine a future that my sons want to be with me yes. because we have that kind of relationship and um so burdensome i don't want to be mm. which is why i have to take care of my health now yes. because i want to be healthy when i die so people calling a doula um it could be that the the end has come sooner rather than they think because we have palliative care mm-hmm. and we have oncolo- oncology. And sadly, palliative care is kind of like the last resort. Right. And really, there has to be a shift and palliative care has to come way earlier. Right. Because sadly, there's a lot of um, talk around some kind of hope when it comes to treating an illness that it doesn't only need to be hopeful, Mm -hmm. but it needs to be addressing everything so that if there is nothing left to do, you don't tell the family in the last hour. Yes, yeah. Because obviously that means that the person is actively dying. (laughs) You know, they're coming to the end and then you've decided there's nothing left to do. You've got to have these conversations yes. a long time before. Yeah. Yeah. But I think people who call a doula have already put a lot of thought behind that. Sure. And so they would have started to inform themselves. Mm-hmm. They would have started to looking at what are the options. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's advisable to do that, to know what your options are, because there are two most amazing wards in the hospital General in Palma mm-hmm. and the Juan Marc on the Budniola Road, the mm-hmm. Soya Road up towards Budniola. Those have both got wards and it's palliative care, right. which means that there's a whole different approach. And it doesn't mean you have to go there to die, but it means that you can access it early on. Right. Or you can stay home. But if you don't know that, then you don't yes. know that yes. you can call a doula as well. Yes. It's birthing mothers, it's the ones who've investigated, who are curious enough to say, well, I'm not sure I want to go to a hospital and then there's a shift change and, I, you know, I yes. saw this lovely midwife and yeah. now it's another one that, yes. you know, yeah. the, the yeah. ones that are saying, but I wonder what's involved with a home birth. And, mm-hmm. and then if you have a, a pretty stress-free pregnancy and there's nothing wrong with the pregnancy, well, stay home. Yes. It's a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't have to pack suitcases and yeah. bags and, you know, you're in your own space. Oh, thank yeah. the Lord for that option. I was very happy to discover the midwife on this island <laughs> 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And it, it is for both both scenarios, yeah. right? for coming into the world and for leaving the world. And we talked about this yesterday at the Death Cafe saying that if something happens in this country, in yeah. Spain, New York or in Spain, um, to do with either the will or to do with your funeral, then, again, most people have no idea what to do and no. who to contact. No. You know, and this is this is a big, big thing. Yeah. Uh, and it's something that we have to get our mentality, our, our mental processes around this yeah. and to understand and to be able to talk about this yeah. in a conversational way and to, to know what's What's going on? But, uh, and never mind the cost of a funeral. Yes, yeah. Because I was just talking with my friend about how 
um, they were looking at making some improvements to the building, which requires the consent of all of the homeholders, homeowners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's going to be a nightmare. So, you know, that situation was finding a couple of grand. Uh, if you haven't got that money... Yes. So fu- how much does a funeral cost? Start informing yourself. Yes, Start yes. investigating. Um, where can one die? Yes. Can you die at home? So start investigating. What would you need to do if that need became urgent? Mm-hmm. How do you go about requesting that the team comes to you and that you are under the care yes. and guidance and support yes. of the professionals? Because if you don't know, if you that don't power know. will be taken away from you. It, well, the, you will be giving it away. Yes. You'll be giving away your power. But yes. not only that you will already be in a state of um, emotional instability with the worry, with the shock, Mm -hmm. because I always say nobody wants to die. It's just like we're all going to. So it does come as a shock. I remember when I went upstairs to say goodnight to my mum and she'd gone and I was was laughing because I was like, Really? (laughs) (laughs) She was in the process. She was dying. But it, it was still this like... You've gone, <laughs> you know, like, hang on a minute. And, yeah. and that's being completely in the awareness that it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when it comes without that awareness, mm-hmm. when it comes mm-hmm. in shock, yes, it's a lot to take yeah. on yeah. and the mind is all over the place. Yeah. So having, and even, I mean, the, 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 the birthing doula has a plan. Mm-hmm. So... Who gets the plan? Hubby yes. or partner or yes. mummy or whoever yeah. is, is the other person bringing, going to be bringing up that baby if there is one. Yeah. Um, but you've written it all down. Yeah. So you know who to call. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. the same with dying. Yes. Yeah. No. no. How much? I've got a lovely um, woman that is my future client, but we've already had the meeting about her funeral. And, oh, man. I bow to her yes. wisdom because her partner had come up to me at a funeral and said, give me your card. I want you to do my funeral when the time comes. And I'll never forget it because that had never happened. Yeah. And I was taken aback because it's hard to go to funerals here in Mallorca where we're a small community. We, we know each other. Yeah. And I see the same, you know, when it's an elderly funeral, and I'll see the same elderly people. It's hard to say, I'll see you soon. Yeah. I'll, no, I won't see you soon. I'll, I'll yeah, say goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> so when he'd asked me for that and I looked at him and I laughed, I said, sir, I'm going to be completely busy in 20 years' time. I won't be able to attend to you, which the guy was 80. Yeah. You know, so he was laughing. But a year later, he got in touch and said, um, I don't know if you remember me. How could I forget him? He says, I'm ready to work on my funeral now. Mm, so nice. we worked on his funeral. So then his partner saw how prepared he was. Mm-hmm. So she called me and she's still walking the Tramontana. She's 80-something. Yeah. She's as fit as a fiddle. I'm not going to be seeing her for a long time. Yeah, no, but no. it's whoever is taking care of her mm. um, life yeah. has my phone number yes. and knows that you call Glynis when the time comes. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. I've got her envelope with all the information i've got her music choices i've got her friends if they're still alive when she goes you know that they say this that and the other and it's wonderful yeah yeah that really is that's prepared that's the way that we want to i think anyway to to go to pass and that from there and you know we talked about yesterday um about um uh the voice and sound and uh, that I, i find it really hard for myself to remember what my mother's voice was yes, like, or my father's yeah. from there, and we were talking about this, uh, about how important it is to have something yes. like that. And so, I've got a wonderful friend that is preparing that service to create um, visual legacy. Yeah. And so I've been talking to him because he's come to me with this idea, and I think it's a wonderful yeah. idea. Yeah. And um, he was just originally thinking, you know, just for funeral purposes. And I said, you know, what would be really great is to get there before. But, of course, it takes a certain character who's going to be calling 
him to say, I want you to put together, I want to be able to tell my future grandchildren, yes. so please record me and intersperse it. With, and then you've got this beautiful, yes. Yes. we all love a good story. Yeah. Like today I just received an email for a cousin in Canada because when our mother died, her father was the first to die. And then a year later, less than a year, the, the last sibling went. So there were three siblings. So she's looking through her father's papers and she's found the lineage from my... So grandmother, great, great. My great, great wow. grandfather. Yeah. And my grandmother's brother has got, from 1901 when he was born... We never knew him. Mm -hmm. But my niece, whose son, who's my great nephew, has the same name. Okay, nice. Over a hundred years apart. Yes, yeah. And, and for me, that is just so fascinating because yeah. I'm fascinated by names as well because names carry yes. so much. Yes, yeah. and, um, and I love my name. Yeah. I often Google me. I'm the <laughs> German in the world. So. <laughs> see what people are saying about you. Well, no, <laughs> just to see if there are any others, because there aren't. <laughs> no, no, not yet. No, well, nobody wants to call their child Glynis, which suits me fine. Yeah. Even though I'm always saying to couples who say they're pregnant, I say, if it's a girl, will you call her Glynis? Because I know nobody will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, which is a shame, because yeah. it's a nice It name. is, it's lovely, it's lovely. <laughs> Um, if there's one thing you'd like people to take away from the podcast about about death, about birth, about the, the work that you do, what would you like to like them to, to share? I'd like them to come along. I'd like them to give it a try before they dismiss it because it, I've heard, death, that's such a horrible name for, for an event, death cafe. So they immediately block themselves because they don't like the word death. Yeah. It's a word. Yes. It's like yeah. God. People go, you know, yeah. it's just a word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that yeah. one's got three letters. This one's got five. Yeah. You know, so come along, come along, call me, contact me, but please get comfortable mm -hmm. with the one guarantee. And it's not just for you. It's for all of those around you who may be grieving. Yeah. And if you're not comfortable talking to them, what kind of friend are you? Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. at the end of the day. So do it for somebody else. If you don't want to do it for you, do yes. it for somebody else. Yeah. That's basically. Yeah. And call me. Yeah, sure. Call. And there's a there's a number of um, death cafes around the island yeah. and around the world. I mean, oh. we haven't got had a chance really to talk about how it's set up. We'll have to get you back for another one to yeah. talk about that. <laughs> But there's a number um, around the island, yeah. isn't there? So, so, so you're starting one. I'm yes. holding you to that yes, because yes. the Southwest needs another one. Yes. So I personally, um, I brought Death Cafes here in 2015 when I discovered them after reading a blog. And a few things attracted me was tea, cake, <laughs> and chatting about death. Yeah. I honestly, I had met my match in heaven. Nice. And so I contacted this guy called John Underwood, who was the founder of the Death Cafe movement. And I'm like, I, my name's Glynis, I'm calling from Mallorca. Is there a Death Cafe in Mallorca? And he's like, yes. And I'm like, oh, I didn't find any with Google search. I'm like, where? He says, well, wherever you want to make it. <laughs> <laughs> so the first Death Cafe was December 2015. Yeah. And that was in Bini Salem, where I live. And now we have death cafes in Bini Salem, in Inca. So those are in Spanish. In Dea, that's in English. Um, I have online for Spanish-speaking health professionals. So it could be volunteers in palliative care. It could be medical staff, doctors, nurses, or workers in hospitals. It could be doulas. It could be celebrants. It could be people in the funeral industry. But that's an online one I've got going as well every month. And then the English one in Palma in Sonis Passes Hospital yes. once a month as well. Plus, I have got um, how many colleagues in Palma? There's four death cafes in Palma. There is death cafes in Esporlas. These are all in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And there's death cafes sometimes in Sepobla. Um, and so, and then 
never mind death cafes online. Yes. So there will be death cafes online in English or Spanish. I did have one English one that was international, but um, that was great during COVID times. But now I'm I'm not so keen. It's enough that I do online. Yes. Yes. yes that. Yes. I do the twice a month we offer the professional mm -hmm. um, health worker one. Right. I do one and my colleague does the other, but it's enough. Right. So, yes. you know, and I think, um, yeah, COVID was great. We all got to spend time on Zoom and online. Yes. But, yeah. You know, yeah. Let's get outside yeah. Yeah. and hug each other. Yeah. And it's not all about humans. Yes. Yeah. No. It's also about animals and that as yeah. well, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And then there's Animal Death Cafe. So hopefully one of our friends... Our new yes, friends will yes. start an animal death cafe because that would be great because there's a whole different um, there's a lot of a lot of um, almost not allowed grieving mm -hmm. yes so people say so oh you're young you'll have another child yes and there's yes. things that really you just shouldn't say yeah. uh, you know yeah. and it's yeah. the same with pets. It's we don't know the extent of that relationship no. and the meaning behind that relationship. Yeah. So yeah. be just a little bit more yeah. compassionate yes. with people's grieving. Two days off if you're lucky from yes. work. Yeah. Yeah. My gosh, yeah. you know, this no. is life changing for people. It, it is, it is totally. So, yeah, I did a lovely um, remembrance ceremony for animals mm -hmm. at Song Baolet. In um, near St. Sayers last year during the festival in English. It was great fun. And an open day at the funeral place in Inca in English. That was great yes, fun. Yeah. So we'll be doing those again this year. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. October. Excellent. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Clemens, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Very it's wonderful yeah. having you here. And uh, um, it's yeah, so much to talk about, so much yeah. to share. So yeah. much to keep I know. With. We could carry on for another hour. Yeah, really, really. <laughs> Um, and a uh, quick thank you to my sponsor, Share at uh, webdesignshare.com. Please like, share, subscribe, and uh, I look forward to catching up with you guys real soon. So uh, namaste, aho, and bless you. Bye for now. Bye for now.